Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining me for um, today's lecture. Um, we're going to be talking about anterior segment and contact lens applications of OCT. And uh, this, this is an area and a topic that I'm extremely passionate about. Part of the reason for that is because we've incorporated it relatively aggressively in the practice. And, and you'll see real case presentations and reports on how it's actually being utilized in the optometric practice. But I find that a lot of times people that um, are gravitating towards this course are interested in it for, for one of two reasons. One, they, they're either interested in incorporating OCT technology within their practice, and they're wondering whether or not they need the anterior segment module on that OCT. The, the second practitioner who may be interested in this course is that practitioner who already has OCT in their practice. They already have anterior segment OCT capabilities in their practices, but they may feel like they're underutilizing the technology. So for both of those groups of practitioners, I, I hope that you take away a lot from this lecture and this discussion. Now, as we're going through the course, please feel free to um, shoot any messages that you have or any questions about any of the material that we're talking about or going through over the next 45 to 50 minutes. Um, before we do get started, it is important that you do know a little bit more about my um, background. So I don't have any proprietary or financial interest in any of the products that I am going to be describing or mentioning. Um, I have worked with a number of companies, and those companies that I've worked with are, are listed here. And, and I've worked with them in a variety of capacities through their speaking, writing, acting in an advisory capacity or performing research for those companies. And, and I, I hold the relationship that I have with these companies in high regards because they really give me, the, the ground floor clinician, the ability to um, share with them some of the needs of the clinician and what we wish we had in clinical practice and also too with some of those technologies that they're interested in developing, whether or not there's really a void in patient care or if there's a gap in patient care in that segment and and if they are truly creating something new and unique. So again, the relationship that I have with these companies I hold in high regards and I think for those of you that are on the webinar today, you'll hopefully be the beneficiaries of these relationships because you will see some of the newest and latest information in these areas. Now again, to put things into perspective for you, I, I do work with a lot of companies and a lot of industries, but where I spend most of my time is in um, my private practice. I'm a, a partner in a three location, uh, six doctor practice. Four of us are partners and we're two of us are associate docs. And, um, and, and again, on a day-to-day -day basis, I'm, I'm seeing patients. So again, I really want to deliver you the best uh, information here through the science and the technology, but I also want to give it to you in a really practical sense. So I think when we're talking about anterior segment OCT, it's appropriate to start where, where we all thought we were going to be utilizing this and really um, the basis of it and why we uh, in optometry embraced it. Um, back in 2002, when the ocular hypertensive treatment trial was published, we realized the benefit or the added value from a patient care perspective of checking pachymetry uh, readings on our patients. And much of that came from the fact that if individuals had corneal thicknesses greater than 588 micrometers, they actually were less likely to develop glaucoma over a five-year time period. And if individuals had corneal pachymetries that were less than 555 micrometers, they were at a higher risk of developing um, glaucoma over a five-year time period if they were ocular hypertensive patients. And those individuals between 555 and 588 micrometers were in this kind of in-between range between, between these two corneal thicknesses. Now what's interesting is when we look at traditional ultrasound pachymetry, we realize that if the probe is appropriately placed on the cornea and is perfectly perpendicular to the cornea, we get extremely accurate results and reads of the cornea. But if that ultrasound probe is potentially tilted or turned, you can immediately see that the differential between the anterior surface and the posterior surface of the cornea is, is artificially lengthened. So one of the reasons why, if you remember utilizing the ultrasound pachymetry scans, um, you, you usually had to get eight or ten readings and you'd take 
the three readings that were consistent with one another and also the thinnest of those readings because the odds are those thicker readings were points where the probe was actually placed at an angle on the cornea as opposed to being perfectly perpendicular. Well, what's interesting is when we look at OCT technologies, we now really take this out of the equation um, of consideration. Essentially what we always have is, in particular in the central cornea, is a perpendicular reading of the central corneal thickness. And what you'll find is if you're currently using an ultrasound probe and you transition into OCT pachymetry, you'll see that oftentimes the corneal thickness is somewhat less than what you measured it with the ultrasound probe. Why this is important is if, if we're potentially measuring these individuals at a thicker corneal thickness, um, we may be putting them in a safer zone if they're an ocular hypertensive patient. And a, getting a true read may put them in the appropriate risk category, which the anterior segment OCT module allows us to do. Now what you're looking at here in the bottom right hand side of the screen is a pachymetry map on a patient who's had a corneal pachymetry performed. And what you can see is in this scan you're looking at a central 6 millimeter scan. And in this central 6 millimeter scan you can see there are various zones that have been blocked off, centrally and more peripheral zones. And in the top left you can actually see the portion of the cornea that's actually being scanned. If you're utilizing your anterior segment OCT to manage glaucoma, you're really looking at that central thickness in that central circle to determine what that central corneal thickness is. Now, keep in mind, and I'm going to be showing you a lot of these pachymetry scans, keep in mind that this is a pachymetry reading. So you're actually looking at central corneal thickness. Even though this resembles a corneal topography, this is not what we're looking at here. We're looking at a thickness map of the cornea. What you can also see on the left hand side is there's a color coded thickness map or scale as well that shows you relatively thicker and thinner regions on the cornea. And what you can see is those light blue regions um, in the pachymetry map represent those areas that are somewhat thinner and those greener areas represent those areas that are somewhat thicker. Now what's interesting in this particular scan is that you can see some thinning inferiorly in this individual's eye. We're going to talk a little bit more about that because this is one of those things that we started seeing and we realized that we were actually catching some subclinical keratoconic individuals and when we then performed topographies on them we confirmed the diagnosis. But what's also interesting with these patients is that there's oftentimes these readings that are high technology OCTs will give us um, right beside the pachymetry map. And sometimes we, we look at those numbers and we see what those numbers are and other times we just kind of overlook those numbers. Well this is a scenario or a situation where you're going to want to pay particularly close attention to these numbers. Just as an example, I've circled for you here SN minus IT which equals 74. SN stands for that superior nasal quadrant of the cornea. IT stands for inferior temporal quadrant of the cornea, and I've circled those as well on the pachymetry map, and it's simply calculating the difference between those two. Why these metrics are important is because about six years ago, there was a pretty interesting study that was published looking at keratoconus diagnosis with an OCT-based pachymetry scoring system. And what they did in this study is they...